show here with you until the top of the hour, right here on ESPN Radio, Sirius XM Channel 80, 710 ESPN LA, and of course, 98.7 FM in New York City. On the line with us right now, as promised, Former player, former standout player for the New York Knicks, played for 10 years with the New York Knicks from 1998, 1988 to 1998. In 10 years, went to the Eastern Conference semifinals nine times, went to the conference finals twice, went to an NBA finals once. I'm talking about the enforcer himself, the one and only Charles Oakley is on the line with us right now. Good afternoon, big boy. How you doing, man? I'm good. How you doing, Steve? All right. Uh, first of all, talk to me. Uh, I know that you've said uh, what transpired. Uh, just to reiterate for our audience, a lot of people are wondering whether you had ever said something to James Dolan or anybody before security came up to you and approached you and all of that stuff. Right. Uh, what What is your side of the story? Exactly what happened? Well, first of all, I want to say I'm sorry to all the fans of the Garden, fans who are watching. Um, never want to be a, tr- a troublemaker in life and – it was just a bad scene. Uh, you know, I love New York. I gave my heart to it for my whole decade, and afterwards I played here. But I walked in the garden, um, simple. I was there four minutes. I sit down. I'm talking to people. People talking back to me. And one of the guys I went to, my, why are them guys watching you, looking at you? I was like, who? Them guys, like 10 or 15 guys on the wall. I was like, I don't know, whatever. Then I see him walk on the court in front of me. I'm not paying attention. Then I see him walk back to the side. So I guess they went, they have to tell Dolan whenever I walk in the garden. Anyway, mm-hmm. so they walk back to the side. We talking. Then about eight to ten guys come out. We got orders. You have to leave. Matt, I only been there three and a half, four minutes. They said we have. They said they said exactly to you. We have orders. orders you have to leave. You have to leave the building. Yes. Mm. And that's when and everything like, well, started. That's when everything started. So now, ain't, let, ain't but so much to talk about for I don't know, the four minutes. <laughs> I got you. Let me ask you this question, Charles. What yes, if sir? anything, were, what if anything at all were you saying out loud after you sat down in your seat? In that four-minute span, did you say anything to James Dolan? Did you say anything to anybody with the Knicks? Uh No. I said something to the guy. I'm like, why are y'all looking over at me? The guys who were looking at me sitting behind the Knicks bench, like standing on the wall. I'm four rows from this guy. So I'm going to walk in a place and just start hauling out Jane Dolan, Jane Dolan. I mean, that's embarrassing, man. I did not do none of that. I didn't know the man was sitting in front of me at first until they walked over there. And well, then, sh- but I still, I'm four rows behind him. Right. So you weren't just. I, mean, so just, I was so just- hauling something out. And plus, everybody in the garden hollering so hot. If I'm hollering something directed to him, how could he hear something full road and everybody in the garden hollering? Mm. So just to be clear, what you're saying is is that folks who, who folks who, who claim or who believe you were shouting stuff at James Dolan and that's why security came over to you, you're saying that never happened, there was no truth to that. Is that correct? Never happened. John McEnroe was sitting right beside him. If John McEnroe said I said that, it's, he was there. Then on the way out, I was like, I spoke to him on the way when I was in handcuffs. He mm-hmm. spoke back, and that's the only time I ever said anything near him when I spoke to John. When I was leaving with handcuffs, I didn't. If I was talking loud, I, he couldn't hear me if I was talking because it's four rows and people hollering. But I, I wasn't even talking to no one. I, I'm talking like I like I'm, the guys who told me about the security. I said I don't know why they're watching me. Mm. Charles that's Oakley, what I said. Charles Oakley right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Let me ask you this question. Before you went and before you were explaining stuff at the very, very beginning, you said that they're supposed to inform James Dolan whenever you're in the arena. That's what you said. How do yes, you know sir. that? Because several people have told me they're people who retire from there. It's It's a rule. They have to – this ain't just this year. It happened last year. Four security guys walked over me. I was at a game. I let it go. I told I told two or three different lawyers, they can't keep doing this to me when I come in the garden. Walk, talking about I can't walk around. I said, And I told the security guard like this. The guy's name is Harry, but he's not there no more. I mean, four other guys. 
And it was my answer was there, too, at this time. I said, this man can't keep sending these people over here and telling me what I can't do. I told you. I told them. I want to go where my tickets lie. If my tickets say I go this way, I go that way. So when I got up at halftime, they followed me to the bathroom. They followed me back to my seat. So you're saying that this has been going on for more than a year now. Wherever more, you go yes, in the garden, yes, wherever you go in the yes. garden, they follow you around. Even if you go to the yes. bathroom, they follow you yes. to the bathroom. Yes. I got witness. It was one of the John Gotti guys there. Some other guys I was with. they like, why is they following Oak to the bathroom? I didn't know until they told me. Charles Oakley right here with Stephen A. ESPN Radio. At any time, have the Knicks organization issued you a letter or anything of that nature telling you that you were not welcomed at the Garden, that you were not welcomed to Knicks games? Have any of those things happened with you? No, sir. Nope. I use own t- season tickets, so they know they had a letter to send to me. They can send it to my car wash, Brooklyn car wash in Long Island, uh, give it to one of my ex-teammates. I mean, a lot of them... Don't stand up for me, but it's okay. They leave me out for the drive, but I fought for them every night, and I don't like that. When Mason had a problem, or somebody I'm involved with, someone close, I'm going to speak up. If the, other, if, if, if the person wrong talking about somebody I know, I'm going to speak up. I'm that type of guy. I played all the years in the NBA. Ask anybody, any coach, I'm a stand-up guy. I don't let you dog my teammates if he's right. If he's wrong, you can do what you want. Charles Oakley right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Charles, let's get into what we saw on video. We saw you uh-huh. mush a guy in the face. We saw you yeah. uh, 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 push a guy twice, telling him to get his hands off you or whatever. Are th- is there anything about your reactions that you find regrettable today? I mean, you never want to do nothing to no one in life. But I just, like I said, I, I've had seven incidents in the last six years. Guys walk up with me. Uh, in, 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 I had an incident in Vegas. I got jumped two times. One time it was eight guys. Next time it was seven guys. So when people start walking up with me, I never had a rule. I don't let people just walk up with me. That eight or nine guys. One guy, try your luck. Eight or nine guys, I got to brace myself and be ready for the challenge. And my thing was, let me just get myself together. I don't know what's going to happen because they had no right to walk up on me. Send, send, a, send a New York cop, tell Oakley he got to leave. Escort me out of the building. I have to be respect. It was a cop there. Every time he asked me something, I did it. I did it. I did it. You can call the precincts. And I told them there. It was the other guy. They they got they went over bound for no reason. But I'm not going. I mean, I I might have touched some guys, but they touched me. So I I got a right. So they want to charge me three accounts. I mean, I have to go to court and see what the you know see what happened. Well, but Charles, you and I have known each other for a long time, and I know that I I know what an honest guy you are. But at the same time, you my myself and others would say. To you, those guys, they're guard and security. They work for the guard, and they may not be law enforcement officials, but all they did was, 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 all they were doing was following their job in terms of being instructed by James Dolan. If, they, if indeed that's what happened, they were being instructed just to do their job by getting you out of the arena. Well, when you look at it from that perspective, what? I'm sorry? Well, what? I didn't do nothing. They struck the way because they went and told him I'm in the building. Then two minutes later, they came and just tried to tell you, had, I, we got ordered to. I mean, they was like they really plotted it because they went back to what he was at. Then they came into me and like we got orders. So you didn't go back to him. You wouldn't have told him I was in the building. He probably said, "Well, go back, then go get him and get him out the building." I mean, I'm not gonna argue with Jane Dolan. I have really no beef. I wasn't. Try- I've been trying to sit down with this man for four or five years, find out what did I do to make him dis dislike me. All I did was play hard for him, the organization for ten years and the fans in New York, and gave him my heart every night. So. He don't have to like me, but he didn't have a right to send. I mean, I bought my ticket to get in. I mean, I ain't like to give me a ticket. They used to give me tickets about 10 years ago. They stopped that. I didn't cry. I just say I like the city. I know New York is the mega of bas- mega basketball and how much the people in New York love basketball. And I mean, so just to I be mean, clear, I feel sorry for the fans. So just to be clear, Charles, you're saying if a law enforcement official had come up to you and identified himself and asked you to leave, it would have been no problem. But the fact that it was guard and security, you're saying that's not good enough because you had a ticket, you have a seat, and you have every right to be at the game. Well, Is that an accurate I, depiction of what you're saying? It's accurate, but I'm saying it, when they told the law enforcement to come over and put the handcuffs on me, I was, everything he told me, I obeyed. But them guys, I mean, they always, it's, like I said, all you guys walk around and walk and walk is, you know, with their chest sticking out. I mean, okay, I've been in a situation before. 
I, we almost got to jump in the garden back in the uh, 90s, like some guys from the West Coast, uh, Big West, Shook, and all of them. You can ask Mark Jackson and them guys, like, what are your credentials? I said, you don't have no credentials. I work here all the time. So this is our event tonight. I said, when you show me something, I, my, I'll show you something. So my thing is, they got walkie-talkies. I don't know what they're doing, but, man, it, 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 it shouldn't have come down to that, man. I don't have nothing personal with that, man. Charles Oakley right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Just a couple of more, just a few more questions, Charles. Number one, uh, it was reported, and I was one of the people that reported it, that uh, Michael Jordan, uh, Phil Jackson had reached out to Michael Jordan. I heard that he had reached out to Michael Jordan, and Michael Jordan was trying to reach you because we know how tight you guys are. Did Michael Jordan reach you eventually? And if so, what was that conversation like? I mean, it was it was just a casual conversation. You know, this is what we do, talk breeze. You, know, you need me to come and get you? And I said, well, just fly up and get me. And I said, no, it's New York. I mean, I got love in the city. So I have a couple of my friends, Chris, uh, a couple of my guys from Long Island. One is an ex-cop and one is a real good friend of mine. I work for the charity, um, Camp Price in Long Island. But, I mean, it didn't come down to it. Yeah, he took on me. I appreciate the love. I mean, I appreciate the love for everyone who called and said what was going on. And that was brothers and friends for the dude when you love someone. But uh, it just it's it's it just I don't know why it's so touchy when I come in the garden. The fans love me. I try to sign autographs, I take pictures, I show a good time. I mean I don't go like I used to because I just say, hey, once or twice a year I just go sell make nine, ten mm-hmm. times a year. But no, it just it's just well, bad to be but Charles, people believe that, you know, you, you talked about how you, you've you been trying to reach out to James Dolan for four or five years to talk to him to see what his problem was with you. But you've been on the record being relatively critical of the Knicks and relatively critical of James Dolan. Okay. So you had to know he wouldn't he wouldn't like you too much. Right. So why have you been well, trying to reach out to him? I, I've been I've been saying the same thing since I've been saying since eight, eight months came to New York. So if it's critical, it's cri- I ain't critical, man. Y- yeah, you more critical. Other people in the air, it's twenty uh, a, b- a bigger time quicker. I might have said yes. it ain't the, it ain't the article. It's the headlines. And somebody told me he get mad at the headline. I don't write the headlines. He asked me questions. I have great conversation. I, I, I mean, if you okay, said like this year, ask me how many games the Knicks win. I said twenty, thirty, seven, forty two. I mean, what do I supposed to say? They can win sixty. <laughs> huh? I mean, just look at the talent what they got. I mean, come on. It is what it is. But I, mean, I, but I don't have nothing to person against this, man. I mean, I died on the floor, took charges, got banged up. I mean, didn't, didn't cry about nothing. Didn't cry about how much money I paid. I played before the love of the game, my teammates, and the fans. Because at the end of the day, you're going to see more fans in life that who watch you play. And they let, let the fans judge you how you play on the court. Don't be trying to – guys be trying to do all this self-emotion with themselves. At the end of the day, fans know real basketball. They don't know what people do. You can't be fake out there playing basketball. You got to show people you need to have IQ and you understand basketball. Charles Oakley, one of the things that a lot of folks had a problem with was the statement that the New York Knicks issued, the last line yeah. or so in their statement, where they said you were a great Nick, but they hope you get the help. They hope he gets some help soon or help he gets the help he needs. Uh, what was your reaction when you saw that last line from the Knicks PR department? That's another smack in the face like the officer, like the officer security guard came over there and trying to tell me to leave. I have a ticket. They, you know, they good PR, but uh, they, I don't know. They, they want to be cute with the uh, statements, but that's cool though. I mean, you can't trust my, you know, you trust my character and all this. It's cool. You, you trust the ten years when I played there. I'm the same guy. So, whatever happened ten years, I'm the same guy. So that's, I mean, they got to, they want to say that, be all harsh about things. I, I, I can deal with it, but mm-hmm. when I come, I come by myself most of the time. I ain't come and send ten, twelve people to try to make something happen and you know you get in my face you do this and that i, I i'm gonna protect myself they would send one guy like they should have like the police to come over and talk to me like a gentleman not 10 people so you send 10 people by one person i mean it's a coward mood anyway at any point in the past or currently i, I already asked you had you been banned from Madison Square Garden? I want to follow up and make sure that no, i heard your answer correctly. no that's never no, happened no i haven't got no letter okay do you care at this point whether or not that happens? I mean, my thing is, I would love to be able to go to the garden, but I don't want to keep going to the garden and all this is going to keep happening. I mean, my thing is, I, I feel sorry for the fans because those fans like me and they appreciate me and I appreciate them. And at the same time, I don't have to have this to go 
to the garden every time I go. Somebody telling me, watching me, looking over me. If you had one final statement that you wanted fans and the New York Knicks to know, what would that be? I mean, I love New York. I love the fans. I mean, they've been great to me over my career. They helped me in my career. And I just wish that whoever Dolan and myself, I would still try to work something out with. I'm not a hater. You know, maybe well, one why guy. Desire hates, to work but... anything? Why desire to work anything out with, Char- with James Dolan at this point? Why? I mean, because, I mean, like I said, everything bad ain't bad. We can try to – it's already bad enough what's going on. I mean, you know, 20 years, one, two years in play. I mean, fans are tired of watching stuff like that. I mean, let's try to start somewhere. Maybe I can come and make a, make a suggestion, make, make them get better. Who knows? I mean, they need some. They need some kind of uh, diehard battery or seals, cat battery or something. To make, they need a jump. I got Rich you. Chris Cross ain't but one of them left, so. <laughs> Charles Oakley, man, I appreciate the time, buddy. Thanks for calling in the show. I appreciate right, it. Man. Take man. it easy.